client said to me yesterday, change is really hard. I can't seem to make the changes in my life that I want to. They pointed at behaviours, they pointed at beliefs. Their words were really expressing how desperate they were to make some changes, but how difficult they were finding it. I said, do you know what? Change is quite easy. The adoption of new behaviours, of new beliefs, of new ways of looking at things is driven by a number of things, including, for example, motivation. Now, motivation doesn't do everything for us. This guy I was talking to was really motivated to change. But there are routine ways that we've got into of thinking about things that don't make it easy to change. So today I'm going to share with you a very simple process by which you can not only change some of your current beliefs and ideas, but you can set yourself up to be able to deal with any change in the future too. So let's get started. Hey, this is The Change Show with Simon Phillips and this week's episode about Think to Change is focused on the fact that we spend far too much time worrying about change and actually if we just apply some proper thinking we'll find it's not as difficult as we thought it was. But let's start there. Let's start with this notion that change is hard. Why do we think that? Well, I love the way Brendan Bouchard talked about this recently. He said it's all based fundamentally on fear. Three particular fears. A fear of loss, a fear of process and a fear of outcome. So the first of these, a fear of loss, is when we anticipate that if we change, we're going to lose something. So, for example, I've got some great friends. When I told them that I'd become a vegetarian, their view was, oh, I wouldn't like to do that. I love my meat too much. And I sort of got that because when I was a meat eater, I absolutely loved it. And I did that for many years. But there were other things that affected my thinking about meat that made me think, no, I want to be a vegetarian. But there was that fear of loss involved up front. And of course, the other fear associated with loss is, will I, through changing, become someone different to the people around me? They won't want to associate with me. I'll lose some of my best friends. Of course, the reality is, if they are a really great friend, you won't lose them from a change of mind. OK, so quickly on to the second one, a fear of process. If I do this, if I make this change, it's going to be difficult. I'm going to need to do things in a more methodical way. I'm going to need to plan ahead. I'm going to need to fundamentally change a lot of the activities in my life to incorporate this new way of doing things. And you know what? That's all just way too hard. And sometimes this holds people back from just liking a video or subscribing to this channel. But I promise you, it's really simple. OK, and the third fear that Brendan talks about is a fear of outcome. And this is all based in that mindset of what if? What if I do all of these things? What if I make these changes in my life and it's still no better? What if I don't feel any better? I don't my life doesn't necessarily feel enhanced by these changes that I'm making. What if, what if, what if? So, as I say, a lot of the reasons why we think change is hard is based on fear and it's based on a fear of things that maybe haven't actually happened yet. So why do some people think that change is easy? I think it's because actually, on some levels, when we get our heads around it, and I'll come back to that later, adopting new ways of doing things is actually quite easy, isn't it? So back in 2003, I was writing about how we were going to be using these things in all areas of our lives. Now, at the time, people only thought of a phone as a phone. But the new technology that was emerging said to me, well, if I can do this, then I could do that. That would be exciting. I could also do this. Basically, what I was creating for people was a vision whereby they could see themselves doing things like ordering things online, shopping, playing games, connecting with people around the world, all through their phone. Now, the estimates are 
most technology adoption takes about 20 years. So in that context, you might think change must be hard then. But if we think about what they're saying in a little bit more detail, we start to see a real truth. What they say is adoption of technology by the mainstream takes 20 years. Early adopters, pioneers, are doing things within six months. So what's different? There must be something different in the mindset of a pioneer, of an early adopter, of a change maker that's enabling them to make those changes really quickly. And of course, we all know that when we actually make the change, it's nowhere near as difficult as we thought it would be. Think about remote controls, think about smartphones, think about using an iPad or a desktop computer or anything that people use when it comes to technology. How much easier is it really than we thought it was going to be? So there's something going on in the mindset of a pioneer that we can all adopt if we recognize that it's just our thought processes that are getting in the way of adopting new ideas. So let me show you then how change can be easy. And here we're back to our old friend, the reframe. So a fear of loss becomes an anticipation of gain. I'm going to feel healthier. I'm going to be able to eat so many different foods. I'll be able to look at a menu and instead of fixating on the one thing that I always choose, I'll start to explore other areas. A fear of process can be overcome by just focusing in on the very first step and not worrying too much about everything that's going to come thereafter. And as we found out previously when we were talking about the power of now, the very first step can often be not just the most difficult in our minds, but actually the easiest one to do because we can break it down into small increments and the very first step can literally be buy a book, read something, listen to something, talk to somebody about something. So we can get into the process really simply. And the fear of outcomes, what if I do all of these things and I don't get the results I want? We can flip that to what if I do these things and my life is so much better? What sort of things could be improved by making this change? What if my life is unrecognizably amazing as a result of making this change? If we fixate on that instead of all the things that could potentially go wrong, we're more likely to see the opportunities for improvement. We'll spot the smallest idea that's going to move us forward. Because ultimately, the reason we find change hard, if it's all about fear, it's because we're misunderstanding what fear stands for. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real. But don't get me wrong, fear is really important on occasions. It keeps us safe. If there's a fire, we should fear it. If there's something terrible happening in our environment, fear may just keep us alive. But how often does that actually happen in our lives? Because that isn't happening, but our responses still get triggered, we tend to find that we have fear of things that are actually not life threatening. We fear bad outcomes. We fear the amount of effort something's going to take. We fear a loss of reputation or a loss of face. But these aren't necessarily things to be feared. They're things to be thought about and understood. So a lot of our fears these days are actually just imagined. And that's actually really great because it means we can work on it. If it's just imagined, if it's just a thought, we can work on that and transform our lives. So think to change starts with thinking. It starts with understanding where is that fear coming from? What am I fearing here that's preventing me from moving forward? If I can understand it, I can then start to work on it. And with understanding comes an opportunity to reflect and think back to previous times when I've been fearful of change, I've done something to actually make a change and it didn't kill me. In fact, it liberated me. So understand, reflect and then do because we can do things in the knowledge that we're actually still safe. So what change are you resisting right now? What fears are holding you back? Are they real or are they imaginary? Because if they are just in your imagination, 
Seek to understand them. Reflect on the last time you tried something like this and recognize that you're still here. You thrived probably on the last change that you made. Okay, good luck making some changes this week and I'll catch up with you very soon.